Hello everybody and welcome back to Oxen Not Included. I was planning on streaming today and doing a little bit more progress in our Let's Play of Maximum Difficulty Oxen Not Included. But as you saw yesterday, we had a pretty rough stream. And part of the reason why we had a pretty rough stream is that very recently, in fact just yesterday, the Abyss Light bug came back. Clay reverted some changes that they had made because they were causing some problems in other aspects of the game. And unfortunately reverted to a version of the game that had the Abyssalite bug. And for those of you who are a little bit newer to the game or just aren't familiar with this, the Abyssalite bug is basically where we have some ultra hot abyss light or ultra cold abyss light, which normally should be a perfect insulator. It has a thermal conductivity of zero. No heat should be transferring in or out of this thing. And yet, if we put some gas next to it or liquid or something like that, we're gonna see this gas start to change temperature to match the abyss light. There is heat being conducted from this abyssalite, even though it is a perfect insulator, and that causes some serious problems for our base, in particular in our Let's Play, because uh, the area that we were planning on using for our plastics production had a bunch of exposed hot abyssalite in it, and so once this bug came back, uh, we started seeing basically temperatures go up like this, which uh, meant that before we could get our plastics operation up and going, we had to build a big... Uh, wall of insulation to try and contain that area and I just didn't really feel like playing when the bug was present because I knew it was going to cause a lot of headache and a lot of problems and we're already at a point in the game where we have a lot of headache and problems just because of the difficulty level so uh, we're not gonna stream today but I'm also not the sort of guy who's gonna take this sort of thing lying down insert clip of Liam Neeson from Taken saying that he has a particular set of skills Clay you may be some faceless evil mega corporation bent on my dupes destruction but I have a particular set of skills and they are finding exploits and exploiting them I'm pretty good at it and I thought, my first thought this morning, when I saw the Abyss Light bug was still here, was let's just exploit the Abyss Light bug. Because this is really easy. People have done it before. I've seen plenty of videos even uh, showing how to do the Abyss Light bugs where you, uh, you use the Abyss Light to either super cool or super heat things basically for free. That's something you can do in the game. But I also thought that's, one, too boring and already have been done before. But also, Clay is probably aware of the problem and is probably going to patch this bug out very quickly. The only reason it came back was because they reverted to some earlier version of the game that had these problems, and uh, that's the way it works. But pretty soon, I imagine, probably in the next day or two, they're going to revert back to some save that or some version of the game that doesn't have this bug, because they've solved the bug before, so it shouldn't be too hard to solve it once again. So I didn't want to make a video that I knew was going to be outdated right away, but instead... What if we made an even cooler video? One that I actually haven't seen anybody discuss before, but is definitely present in the game and is a pretty important thing if you if we're trying to maximize things with exploits. Let's talk about phase change bugs. In particular, let's do a build where we show you how to tame a volcano, and not just tame a volcano, but use a volcano to cool down your base. And that's more or less what we have right here. I'm pretty sure I need to replace this hydrogen with something a little bit colder. Let's go and do that so the steam turbine works. But here is the basic idea. We have a simulated volcano right over here. Imagine a volcano where these are the four tiles of the volcano. This would be neutronium. And here is the tile where magma uh, erupts, right? This is the tile for all vents and geysers where the actual liquid or gas appears. Um, and if this is blocked, then the whole thing stops. But in any case, let's imagine this is a volcano. We have a steam turbine here that is cooling things down, but the only purpose of the steam tur turbine is to cool down the magma to just above the point where it will solidify. And we're not even doing that great of a job with this magma. It freezes at basically 1410 degrees Celsius. We have it down to 1440 degrees Celsius, just because I don't want to solidify the magma at all here. I want to keep it in liquid form, but we're cooling it down to this point of 1410, roughly there, so that we can spill it off the edge here. And once it spills off the edge, it's going to come into contact with this metal tile, which is at some room temperature thing. Although this could be ultra cold if you want. It could be actually fairly warm, doesn't matter. And it's going to come into contact with this igneous rock. This igneous rock, I have super chilled to negative 115 degrees Celsius. It's also kind of uh, warming up because it's in thermal contact with this weight plate right here. Um, but that's the only thing it's in thermal contact with. The rest of this is just vacuum. But here's the trick. Here's the exploit that we are going to utilize here. 
when you solidify a liquid, as long as the liquid isn't solidifying into a tile, there isn't enough liquid to solidify into a tile. As long as you're solidifying a small amount of liquid, I think it's basically below 500 kilograms, something like that, it will not average its temperature with a chunk of what it solidifies into. It will instead take the temperature of whatever chunk it solidifies into, if that makes any sense. So this magma is going to solidify into igneous rock. We have a chunk right here of igneous rock at negative 115 degrees Celsius. This magma, when it solidifies, even though its temperature was 1410 degrees Celsius, right? It was, it was 1410 degrees Celsius. The game is gonna say, okay, now you are a negative 115 degrees Celsius. So let's let the system run and let's go ahead and simulate a few eruptions from our volcano. Let's say 200 kilograms, but we're also gonna keep it at 2000 degrees Kelvin, which is uh, roughly the temperature this would pop out at. And we're just gonna put slowly through these eruptions, we're gonna put one ton of magma through this system. Here's one ton of magma. Now remember we had two tons of igneous rock down here, right? At negative 115 degrees Celsius. Now we have three tons of igneous rock at negative 115 degrees Celsius roughly. It's still kind of cooling down a little bit because it's in contact with this weight plate, which is uh, warming it up a little bit. But we have just created from lava, we have created one ton of negative 115 degree igneous rock. And what we can do uh, to make the system even better is we can take this igneous rock, we can take this igneous rock, and we can run it through a conveyor loader and have it run through this system and cool down the very system that is being used to cool off this magma. This is a pretty rudimentary system that I've developed right here. You can make a more sophisticated one. Part of the problem with this also is that this weight plate doesn't quite work because when you solidify the magma onto this tile and it, re and it joins this chunk, it doesn't update this weight plate. So the weight plate is still going to see the wrong thing, basically. So if I go ahead and do this one more time, fill magma, let's put another few tons in here, right? We'll see that even though the weight has increased above two tons, which is what I have the weight plate set to right now, it's not going to, it's not going to get fixed, right? It's still going to say that it has less than two tons on it. So we have a bunch of eruptions here. And now I have more than two tons of igneous rock. The weight plate is still saying that it only sees this. There is a trick to that where I could have a door right here that opens and closes that would send kind of a glob of magma over that would reset things. So there's a very finicky system here, but the basic idea, pretty simple. We have our volcano. We have a way of cooling down the output of that volcano to just above its freezing point, the point where it will solidify. And then we just let that spill off onto this little system right here. And we have our ultra cold chunk of igneous rock then convert the temperature of that magma to ultra cold. Now, you might be thinking, well, that's pretty neat. I like that. The build definitely could be better, but uh, you know, interesting interesting way of cooling your base down with volcanoes. Let's take it a step further. Let's, let's do something a little bit better. Let's make an ice machine. Because this doesn't just work with, oh, we have run out of water in the system. Let me fix this. Uh, 1,000 kilograms, let's make this 300 degrees Kelvin. That should be about 27 degrees. All right, perfect. And then let's just clear this floor right here. Let's make an ice machine. Here, we have a temperature control system that is powered by the output of this system right here. Right, we are running with conveyor rail Let's go to shipping, conveyor rail. We are running the conveyor rail. The, all the ice that we pick up from this plate right here is gonna be run through the system to keep it cool, right? We also need to toggle this. There we go. So we're running the ice through here to keep the system cool. It is cooling down this water to just above its freezing point, right? We have set these thermo sensors such that we're gonna get the temperature to right where the water is about to freeze before it drops off here. And then we have a little chunk of ultra cold ice down here. And this ultra cold ice is being kept cool by this sort of system that we have right here. I basically have a thermal aqua tuner that's been running and chilling this area down. Because this ice is in thermal contact with this weight plate, 
uh, we are getting some, we are able to kind of cool down this ice. Another alternative is you just fill this tile with water, you freeze it, you have that tile then get mined out to create your initial chunk. But we have our initial chunk of ice right here, basically. And this initial chunk of ice is going to be what all of the water that falls down here gets its temperature set to. There's gonna be a little bit of a cooling burden on this area right here because it does need to cool down the water a little bit more. Negative 1.4 degrees Celsius is not quite the point where the water is about to freeze, right? It's around negative two degrees Celsius, something around, something around there. But that cooling is gonna be very easily done by this system right here. And then this, whatever water temperature of water we're putting in here, us running all this ice through the system is very easily going to cool down this water to whatever temperature we want. It's just about getting it to that precise level. So here we are processing 40 kilograms per second of ice, right? We are taking 27 degree water. We are running it through this system. It is getting its temperature changed to negative 210 degrees. It's getting cooled down by this system and that's a cost that we have to pay for with the ice itself but it's getting, once it gets to the negative 1.4 degrees or so here, it is then dropping to negative 207.5 degrees Celsius, and we're just producing tons of ice. So here we have the ice that's coming out of our system, this one at negative 172 degrees Celsius, because this is kind of our colder ice lane, if we show the shipping again. This one is taking a lot shorter trip through here. So we have like an ultra cold option if you wanted to use the system for say uh, condensing oxygen into liquid oxygen, we could have one of our lines go off and do that. Um, we also have this sort of somewhat warmer system which is appearing at negative 148 degrees Celsius. But this system in total is because it's processing 40 kilograms of water and dropping that water's temperature by about 200 degrees Celsius and water has a specific heat capacity of 4.179, this little system right here, even though it consumes very little power, we're running these four pumps, we're running these two conveyor loaders, we're running this auto sweeper, we have a steam turbine thermal aqua tuner system, which doesn't have to run all the time even because this system right here doesn't need that much cooling, right? We don't need to apply a ton of cooling to this. Uh, but for a very cheap power cost, we are getting 35 million DTUs of cooling per second. 35 million is absolutely insane. To put that in perspective, a steam turbine deletes about 835,000 DTUs per second. This is right here, basically, I can't do the math in my head, but around, what, 40 steam turbines worth of cooling? And for very little power cost either, right? Again, four pumps just to move the water through the system, which you might not even need if you have some other way of dropping the water onto here, right? We could use doors instead of pumps to, to put the water down here, we put a little um, liquid sensor right here, put some doors right here, and just have the doors open when uh, the water level in here gets low enough. That's a possibility that we could have. We could then take our conveyor loaders and use them to, to create the heat exchanger for whatever system we want to cool. We could be running this cold, ultra cold ice through whatever system we want to cool. So we're providing the transportation for our cooling as well uh, as doing the cooling itself. And all for, again, very little in the way of power. This system will consume a little bit of power. Right now I have it just hooked up to a bunch of refrigerators. So we're kind of paying the full cost, but it doesn't, in any case, this will consume a little bit of power even though we are running super coolant through this thermal aqua tuner to get the most efficiency we can. You might need to use these pumps, which would be another thousand watts, but you could reduce almost this entire system to just the cost of running this auto sweeper and these conveyor loaders and get 35 million DTUs of cooling out of the system. So Clay, shots fired, you tried to kill my dupes. You introduced the Abyss Light bug. You tried to toast me on my maximum difficulty auction not included Let's Play. Well, this is this is what's going to happen. If I can't stream the game, or I'm, I could stream the game, I guess, but if I'm unwilling to stream the game because I don't want the bugs to kill me, this is what I'm going to do with my time. I'm going to make exploit videos. I'm going to show people how to cool their bases down using volcanoes. I'm going to show them how to make ice machines that produce 35 million DTUs of cooling. And you can scale the system up. We could have more conveyor loaders here. We could have more liquid vents. You could scale this up, have four of these, double the size of it, do 70 million DTUs of cooling. I, I have no fear. I will take you on. I have, I have a particular set of skills. You don't want to mess with people like me. Fix the bug clay. Okay, that's... That's it for this video. Again, if you don't like using exploits in your builds, definitely don't use this one. This is one of the full-on exploit things. I try, I, 
Every once in a while, we will be doing exploit builds like this. I try to steer away from that and stick to builds that are kind of more on the level. But if you want to get into exploits, here's where, where you're at. Ice machines that produce crazy amounts of cooling. Being able to cool your base down with volcanoes. And until they patch it, being able to superheat materials or super cool them using abyssalite as your, your material. Alright, that's it for this episode. I'll see you guys next time.